for joining me today. My name is Nancy and this is Nancy's Handcrafted Creations. I am going to show you how to make Mr. Jingles. He is an elf gnome and he does not have any ears and I just didn't want him to have any ears. Um, I made his hat, his little shirt, his arms and his legs out of two different sweaters and I will show you how I did that. And I will have the pattern for his little feet and his hands and his body and his head linked below. His body is kind of the same one of the snowman that I made. Um, and his head is also, but they're a little bit smaller. So I made him just a little bit skinnier. So I will have that in a free PDF linked below in the description box. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to join my crafting community and click on that subscribe button. If you want to get notified when I upload a new video, click on the bell and that will notify you when I upload a new video. You must have your notifications turned on for YouTube in your settings on your phone or your computer, whatever you're watching it on. Okay, if you already have subscribed to my channel, thank you for supporting me and um, joining my crafting community on YouTube. Um, I appreciate it so much. I do have a, uh, you, a Facebook group called Nancy's Handcrafted Creations and a um, Pinterest page called Nancy's Handcrafted Creations. So you can follow me over there on both of those. On my um, Facebook channel, on my Facebook group, I do live videos. I try to do once a week. Um, I play games and give out gift prizes, gift packs. Um, and you can post your pictures, you can post of your crafts. If you have any questions on crafting or anything like that, you can just put it in and post it. Um, you must agree to, you must answer the questions and agree to follow the rules to become a member. So you can go over there and I would love for you to be a member and then follow me on Pinterest also. So I will leave those links below. So let's get started and we'll show you how I made Mr. Jingles. So I'm gonna show you, um, I can't show you how I sewed it. Um, I've done these kind of before, but I'm not sure not everybody has probably watched all my videos, but this is the pattern um, that I used for his body. So I did it just kind of like a pyramid and I will have this in a pattern his head is a little bit smaller because it doesn't need to be real big. And then his shoes. And I had the pattern for the mitten and I don't know where that went. Um, but I will have the pattern for a mitten, which is just looks like that. And you know, you have something and then you can't find it, but it was, here it is. So I have that also. So I've used that for about almost all of my gnomes that I do mittens on. And I always cut mine out of chipboard so that they last longer. So what we're gonna do first, and I will take you over to the machine and show you this, it spuds all over. You're gonna cut two pieces of the body and then you're gonna, there's gonna be a base. You're gonna cut one base and then you're gonna cut four of the shoes. So you need two for each foot, okay? And then you're gonna cut two of these for the head. And then the mitten, you're gonna cut four, two for each hand. So let me get you over to my machine and get set up. And I will show you how we sew all this together. And I can't promise this won't be a long video. <laughs> so hang on, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. So I have my two pieces of my body. And we're going to sew up the side. Let me back you up a little bit. So we're going to sew up each side, leave the bottom open and the top, okay? And I would do like a quarter inch 
um, seam allowance. And this is my brand new machine. This is a Quilt Club series by Brother. And I've had a Brother before for probably over 15 years. And I really like them. They're nice machines. And this does 290 stitches. And... It cuts my thread, it will lock your stitches. It is awesome. I was really surprised that I got it. Cause I know me and my husband had talked about it and then we just, it wasn't gonna work out. So, but he surprised me anyway. So just make sure that you're catching both bottom and top and then you lock your stitches at the beginning and the end and now we're going to sew and I have to pin it we're going to I'm going to back you up a little bit here so we're going to pin this bottom. We're going to do right sides together and I start at the seam. And you need to pin this because I don't think you'd be able to hang on to it and have it um, without pinning it. So I just work my way around and pin. Oh, my pins don't want to are dull. And you could make a gnome body like this too. I've kind of done them like that also. So you could use this for a gnome body. So you're just going to pin it all the way around. And I know it's probably kind of dark over here. And then we're going to sew this on. So let me get you closer to the machine again. And I always start at the seam and try not to start right on a pin. And then just make sure you're catching the bottom and the top. You know what? You'd probably be better on this other side. And if you want to take your time, if you've not done this before, practice. Just cut a extra pattern out of material that you don't really care for and practice on a scrap piece before you go ahead and start it and that's the only piece of material that you got. And then take all your pins out. And there we have our, bo our bottom sewed. Okay, so now we're going to sew, do the shoes. You can hem this if you wanted, and I did on his first pair, but I'm not going to. So I made him a little wider, and I'm going to start at the, the back of the heel and go all the way around. So just take your time going around your corners and um, doing your shoe or the foot.
And then when you come up to the point, then you're going to have to stop. And then lift up your presser foot and pivot. And then put your presser foot back down. And then start sewing to go around the curve. And then come back up to the top of the foot. And there's our shoe, our foot. Okay, so you're going to do both of them like that. And then we're going to do the mitten. And then the mitten, I will sew in about a quarter of an inch. And then just take your time going around the curves. You're going to kind of turn the fabric as it's sewing. And when you come down to the little part of the thumb here, you're going to stop. Press your foot up. And if your needle is down too far and it won't turn, pull your needle up a little bit. And then press your foot back down and sew. You're going to probably sew just a few stitches and you're going to stop. We're going to pivot. And you're going to sew around the curve of that thumb. So you can always, if you make your mitten... Um, a little bigger you can always sew it in and then I usually sew both of them cut all the excess off and then turn them right side out and see if they um, are the same size and I thought I had a head here's here's just the head that I sewed so I'll have the pattern and just sew around it just like we do all the other stuff. I backstitch here. I leave an opening. So you're going to leave an opening so you can turn it and stuff it. And then we sew that onto the head. Okay? So hang on. I'll get you back over to the uh, my cutting mat. Now what we're going to do. This is just a sample because I did his in um, an off-white. And then I did his mittens and his shoes in white. So everything is in off-white, his sweater. This is an off-white fleece. So I used that and I got that at Joann's. The sweaters I got at a thrift store. And the sweater, this one had these beads on it. This is from the sleeve part and I will show you. And his hat is part of the sweater also. So let me get some of this stuff out of the way and get my light back over here. So then what you're going to do, and I'll just show you with the mitten, is you're going to take and you're going to cut all this excess. You're going to try to cut real close to that seam, but probably like an eighth of an inch. And then when you go in here, you're going to cut down to that point, but don't cut into that stitching. Because if you don't cut down far enough, you'll get a pucker and it won't... Um, when you go to turn it right side out, it won't, um, you'll just have a big, I don't know if it's like a pucker or whatever. Um, cause you'll know when you see it. So that's what your mitten's going to look like. And you don't need to hem this cause it's going to go underneath his sleeve. Okay. And then his shoe, I would trim as close as you can. You don't have to get too close, but you need to get some of that excess off, especially around the curves. And you don't have to clip the curves. I never do, and they turn out fine. And then you do two of those, okay? And I already have those done. And I already, so how I did his body, I'm not going to stuff it because I already have one done. I put a canning lid in the bottom first. I take a bag of rice, and I know there is so much controversy on rice, and I have used rice for probably four years, and I cut open a gnome just to see. It was one of my first ones I made. There was no bugs, and I get my rice, 
in the big bag at Walmart and it's like 20 pounds for under $10. If it hasn't gone, I haven't bought it for a while. If it's gone up, um, they haven't had it and I've had to buy smaller bags, but I have not had any problem with bugs. Even letting it sit. I had it sitting out in my shed. There was no bugs in there. So that's just, that's mine. I have never had a problem. So for me, it's cheaper, especially when I am making at craft fair season in the fall, when I am making over 100, 200 gnomes. That's cost effective for me. So you're going to put your canning lid in. Then you're going to put your bag. And I just use a Ziploc bag. Uh, I just fill a sandwich bag with rice. doesn't have to be a lot, about a half a cup, a cup or so. And you're going to put that on top of your canning lid. Your canning lid's going to go metal side down. So this sharp edge isn't on the bottom of the material. And then when you stuff it, you're going to make sure you stuff around that bag of rice so it will prevent it from making noise if somebody... Maybe here a little bit, but not much. So you want to, and you don't want to be able to see that if you can see through your material a little bit. This is a little bit thinner than the one I used on Mr. Jingles, the first one. So then you're going to stuff it really firm, and then it's going to look like this. And then you're going to stuff the head, and you're going to turn that right side out. You're going to stuff that really good, and we're going to sew it on. And I will show you, even though this is sewed on, I will show you how I sew it. Um, I thought I had one that I was going to sew on, but I don't. So we're just going to pretend that this is not sewn on. And I'll do a couple stitches for you. And then you're just going to knot your thread. I do the surgeon's knot, which is three loops. And I've already got it knotted three loops and then pull it and then you can cut your excess off and it doesn't matter this is all going to get covered up so if you leave a knot nobody's going to see it so you're just let me get you a little closer so you can kind of see how I'm doing this I gotta tilt the camera up so I'm just going to do a few stitches so you're just going to grab we're going to pretend his head is not sewn on We've sewed this shut, okay, and that doesn't matter how you sew it shut, nobody's going to see it. I mean, if you, if you really want me to show you, I will stop the video, I'll stuff the body, and I'll show you how I sew it, okay? Okay. Okay, I'm going to show you how I stuff and sew. So if there's any questions, I know this is not rocket science, but for somebody who's never done it, and if your stuffing is like you've used it and it's like a ball like this, pull it apart so it's fluffy because then it won't get, you won't get lumps and stuff in your head. And we don't need to stuff this huge because we have to have a hat and we don't want them to have a big head. Okay, so I have my my um, canning lid in there, metal side down. This is my rice, and I put that in there. So if you want to use something besides rice, there's the, oh, those little plastic pellet things. You can use those. People use rocks. I don't really care to use rocks um but i i truly truly in all my four years of doing this i have not um had any problems with bugs i mean i had a container of rice that i actually kind of forgot about in my shed probably over winter so there wasn't probably any way you could get in there and then the spring i went to um clean it out and I found this container full of rice there was no bugs in there honestly I wouldn't use it if it was so we're gonna stuff this and you got to make sure you get it even all the way around and you're gonna stuff it all the way up to the top 
And when we start sewing this shut, if it's not firm enough, if there's not enough stuffing before we close it, then we can shove some more stuffing in there. And we don't want it to be really fat. So that looks good. Okay, now I'm gonna get you closer again so you can see how I'm sewing this. And I gotta tilt up. See, I don't have a designated space for my craft room, so it camera, I don't have a camera, I'm using my phone, so it's until I get to that point and get a camera and all that set up, this is how it's going to be. So you're going to take, and I always start by the seam, and I go a quarter inch down, and I'm going to make sure you guys can see me. Okay, you know what I'm even going to do? I'm going to use black thread. So then you'll be able to see instead of white on white. And even when I use the black thread, you will not be able, you, will, you won't be able to see many of the, of the stitches. So you're going to take, and this is how I hang on to my thread. And I take, so I have this piece here is over this piece. And then I just take and push it through. I got too big of a loop. So I've got my, it's hanging onto my middle finger and then my index and thumb over here. And I just push it through. Actually, I've got it on both my middle fingers once I get started. So you can do three, four times, doesn't matter. And you're going to pull it and you get this nice knot, surgeon's knot. Cut that really close. And now let me make sure I'm going to get this. And this is how I do my thread. So I won't, like a traditional needle and thread, you're going to take, if it's thread thread, then you'd knot both of these together. I prefer to do it this way when I'm using a thicker one so that if I made a mistake, I can take this off my needle and take my stitch out instead of taking everything out and starting all over. So let me make sure you can see what I'm doing. And we're going to start right there at the seam. I'm going to tilt down a little bit because I want you guys to be able to see this. So you're just going to go from the inside and pull that up. And you're going to just leave this shorter. A little bit of a longer tail don't make it too short or you'll pull it off your needle and so we're on this side so now we're going to go to the other side and you're going to take up a stitch and you're going to pull that and now you're going to go back to the other side and you just got to keep watching what I'm doing I'm not sure if this is the ladder stitch and you're going to pull that now you're going back to the other side. So you're going to work back and forth from one side to the other. And you're going to go back over here. You're going to stay close to your other stitch, not right on top of it. And then pull those. See, you can't see the black. So you want to take, I mean, my stitches are probably about a quarter inch wide. And then you're going to go back to the other side. I mean, you don't want to take like half inch stitches. And if you use a little thinner needle, it's better to go through the thicker fabric. So then we're going to go, I'm going to try to do this right handed. And then we're going to go back over here. And then we're going to go back here. I'm going to try to do a video of just some basic sewing, um, hand sewing. So if anybody wants to know how to thread a needle, how to knot it, um, anything like that, 
hopefully I'm going to just say the month of January. Okay. Because I'm just really not sure right now I'm going away for this weekend. So, um, I'm trying to get a few videos done. So you're going to tuck this in when you get to the end and you're just going to grab some of the material on top. And if you have to use your needle nose pliers to push that through, then do it. Because that's what I do instead of struggling. And then when you get it, pull it out. You're going to save yourself a lot of headaches sitting there trying to shove it through and hurt your fingers. And you pull that up. So now what we can do is leave this attached. And let me make sure you can still see we're going to sew the head shut. Okay, we're going to sew the head shut. And then we're going to sew it onto the body. We're going to leave this all attached. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go in by the seam. And we're going to gather this up. It might be a little tough. If there's a little bit of a gap, that's fine. And now we're going to go to the other side. So let me make sure you guys can still see. I still want to make sure you can see. Let me angle this up a little bit. And then you're just going to pull your stitch. Now you're going to go back to the other side. Okay. Grab some material. Pull it. Go to the other side again. Take about a half inch. Put your needle in the material and come out. And then pull that tight. And then go back to the other side, do the same thing. You're going to go in here and come out there. Go back. You're going to go in and come back out. Pull your thread. You're going to go in and come back out. In and out. And now we're going to try to tuck this a little bit in. Just use your needle. Grab some material, go in and come back out. Oh, my cat's got a hairball or something. So if you hear noise, that's what it is. And then you're going to just grab that. See, and you can't hardly see any black thread. So it didn't even matter that I used black. So now we're going to take and we're going to sew this on. You're going to take... It's coming out of the head. You're going to find out where you want it. Your seams should line up. You're going to take some fabric right by the seam on the body and make sure you don't lose your needle because mine's almost coming off. So make sure you, you know how long your tail is. And now you go into the body. Now you're going to go into the head up a little bit from where we sewed. Now you're into the head, now you're going to go back into the body. Okay, you see what, what I'm doing? So now I'm here, now I'm going to go back up here. And even if I left that, I'll go back down here. And I can pull that. You, you can do that to some. I see people do that. In these, I don't know if it's Asian people on Pinterest or whatever. They do a whole line and then they pull it. And, but you got to leave it loose enough, I guess. And like I said, if you use a thread that you can, that's like I'm using black. He's not going to see it. You can't see his head. You can't, his neck that we're sewing, nothing. So you're going to keep going from the head to the body taking stitches and going all the way around. We want this nice and, and sturdy. We don't want it his head to be wobbly. And I'm taking the time to show you guys this again because I know some people, they don't know how to hand sew. They like to hot glue, but I'll show you a body I hot glued. I really don't like hot gluing too much fabric if it's going to be a seam, if it's like this. It, I, I see the glue and I can feel it and I don't like it, especially if I'm going to sell it. Even if it's for myself. It's like, nope, don't like it. See, now I lost my needle, but that's okay. Or I lost my thread. And we can take 
put it back on the needle and keep going. If you, if you double knotted both of these together and your thread broke, you'd have to pull some out and then start all over or knot it off and start another one. This, you don't have to do that. So it's just a little bit easier if you make a mistake to um, rip out a stitch. So you're just gonna keep going. We're almost back to the beginning. And we're gonna make sure his head is nice and snug. And I'm trying to go through my seam. And one of my subscribers, she said she uses hemostats. Well, I don't have a set of hemostats. I would like to get a pair. And now to knot this off, his head is pretty stable. So you're gonna make a loop. You have your fabric and you're gonna go through that loop. I hang on to it like probably three times and then you're gonna pull. And now what I do is I'll take, we're not gonna see it, that doesn't matter, and go in by that spot. If I can get through, I got a lot of fabric down there. And poke it through his body some by close by where you are. Doesn't matter where it comes out. So do that, and then you can come out the front side or whatever. And we're just gonna hide that thread in there. And I kind of pull it and cut it, and it's inside the body. That's how I sew my heads on. That's how I sew my snowman. Anything like I'm doing the body like this. It's very easy. And if you want to sew your arms on, you could do that. But the, these arms, you're not going to need to sew. We're going to hot glue them. So let me set these aside. This is the sweater that I bought. And I'm just going to check my camera. So I use the one sleeve. And it's got the beads up here. And there's the beads on the sleeve. Okay, so now I have to back it up. So you can see... And I'm going to take this down. So on this sweater, I had to take some of the beads off up here. Um, they were just up too high. So I am going to, I have to remember how I did this. Okay. So we're going to cut. So his his body, here's his underneath right here. And that's a raw edge, didn't matter. I just used some white crochet thread cream and gathered it so I could gather it around his body, okay? And that is about, it's gonna depend on how big you make your, um, your body. Um, it's about five inches, okay? So if I measure this up five inches, I'm gonna be right about here. I'm gonna go at, I'm gonna actually go about six. So I'm gonna cut it right there. And that raw edge doesn't matter, it's gonna get covered up. And then we're gonna take, actually we're gonna cut this. We're gonna cut the rest of this. I'm gonna cut it right underneath the armpit. And that's going to be the top, his little collar, okay? That's where we're going to hide his, his um, arms in there. So now we can take this on. You're going to put the seam in the back. And if it's too long, I like to have some of his body down here showing. So make sure it's all centered. And we don't need to glue that. If you wanted to glue it at the end, you could do that. So we're going to, I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to cut a little bit off. I'm going to make sure I get this. I'm going to cut it, fold it by the seam and cut maybe an inch, three quarter inch off. So look at your thrift stores, your rummage sales in the summer. And I can usually glance pretty quick and see if there's something I like. Um, if you can get something that's got beads on it or whatever, just 
once you start looking and that's just the way I am now it's like I look at everything can I use this for a gnome <laughs> okay so we could just glue this if we wanted but I'm just going to do a quick running stitch and let's see if I have some thread here um, I'll just use the needle we were using just to gather it instead of hot gluing I know everybody doesn't sew and they like to hot glue, but you can do whatever you want. Hot glue depends where you use it. It just gets kind of stiff. So, and then you can tie a knot. I'll leave yourself a longer tail. Do you use a surgeon's knot, three loops, whatever. And then we're gonna go in the back. We're gonna start by the seam in we're going to go inside or not's going to be inside and you can take bigger stitches this is just like a gathering stitch so we want bigger stitches because then you can pull it if you do tiny stitches it's hard to pull it so you can gather it so you can get it puckered Okay, so we're gathering, just doing a big running stitch. Doesn't matter what color thread. I mean, I wouldn't use black. Nobody's going to see it, but in case you do show anybody. There's your tail when you started, and you're going to end on the inside. And then we're just going to knot it off so we can gather it around his neck. I got to turn them upside down and just be careful how tight you pull it so you don't break your thread and then do your surgeon's knot and you can cut that and then you can just tuck those tails in and there we have that so now we'll do the other the top part and what I did was I kind of um, just pulled on this because I just wanted it kind of raggedy. So after you cut it, you can do that. So you're going to be pulling little pieces. You're going to have little pieces of yarn that are coming out. So you'll have kind of a mess. <laughs> and this is kind of what I did when I did, um, which I'm going to do a video on him too, is um leaf my other gnome and i can show you him at the end and then we're going to do the same to this other part because we're going to flip it so it's going to be like a collar and then we're going to get rid of our mess that we made some sweaters very easier than others so then shake that off and we can clean up our mess and now we'll put this over and we're gonna do the seam in the back So we're going to do that and then we'll probably have to cut it because I don't want too much. I want the beads to still show. So we're going to cut, probably cut a good inch or more off. And you can save that little bit if you want. You never know. And then just pull this again. Make another mess. <laughs> I hope everybody had a good Christmas. Got to be with our family and friends. Okay, so now let's put this back on him again. And if this is getting to be too long, I might do a two-parter. We'll see. Because right now I know I'm over 40 minutes.
So that looks good. We have the seam in the back, but you're not really going to see it. If you see it a little bit, doesn't matter because we're going to have his hat on. And I don't even know, I don't think I even, if I glued this on, I glued it under here. But I'm going to leave it for right now. And his arms and legs, I did. I used another sweater. This was the bottom front of the sweater. And the arms um, had a really long cuff on it, like this kind of ribbing. And so I cut it. And what I did was, I'm not going to cut that off. I'm going to turn this right side out, but I'm going to do it from the top of his arm. Well, it doesn't matter because it's not going to work out the way I want it to. So just turn this right side out and try not to poke through the sleeve. I don't know what happened to my other turner that I like. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn that and we're going to fold some of this back in so we can fold it up and get that finished cuff. So then you're going to flip it. So it's kind of like that. We can even, we probably might have to shove a little bit more in there. So you got to have it so it's long enough so you can get the cuff. Okay, so now what we're going to do, now that we know we're going to just go in and just in a couple of places, do a little bit of hot glue just to tack it down. You don't need to put a whole bunch. Just about three or four spots. And then press it. And then turn it right side out. And now you can flip it and you'll have his little cuff. And then I took... Oh, let's see. For his arm, um, how I did it, and I did, I did both of his arms, and I wasn't going to do that, so I have to show you what I did now. Okay, so where's the mitten we made? Okay, so what I did was I took two pipe cleaners, and I twist them together, and we're going to make it so his hand is bendable. And you're going to twist all the way to the end. You're going to take and fold it about like that. So you want a little bit down here for his arm. And you're going to take and twist this around the pipe cleaner. And then you're going to try to make like a thumb. And if you have to untwist it and get your thumb first. So that you have enough to get into the thumb. Just so you can twist it around the wrist a little, a little bit, a couple of times. And if his thumb needs to come up a little bit more, just like that, okay? So we're only, the end, one end is twisted right here. So now we're going to take and we're going to put it in. You can fold his mitten down and put it in there. You might have to squeeze it a little bit. And make sure that the thumb gets into the thumb. And you can kind of feel it and then pull it and then pull on the mitten and then get the other part. So our thumb is bendable and now our hand is bendable. And you're gonna take and tie that off You could use a rubber band, but they can break. I, if I use a rubber band, I will use a um, string afterwards and still tie it off. So I just might as well. It, it, if I really need to use a rubber band, I will. 
and then knot that and you can cut that off. And now to hide this and give them some thickness in the thin little sleeve, we're gonna glue it. And this is just like really thin quilt batting. So you're gonna run a bead of glue about a quarter inch or so from the edge. And you're gonna figure out where you want the mitten to come because this is gonna get covered up. So you want some of your mitten. So just a little bit maybe like three eighths of an inch above where you tied it. And now you can even cut some of this off a little bit. It might be a little bulky as long as you don't cut your thread. And we're going to roll this up. And then I'm going to show you a kind of a cool little trick. So I roll it couple of times and I'm going to hang on to it and I'm going to run my glue right here and then I don't have to touch it I don't have to try to flip it over so if you leave it longer then you can just roll it over on itself and you can cut that excess off okay okay let me get you guys just a little closer Okay, and that's how I did his legs also. So I will show you. And we're going to probably end up cutting some of this off. But you're going to cut this excess off. And here's his sleeve. So we're going to put this. And we're going to glue his cuff down also. So you can tack that down. So that doesn't come undone. And we got to make sure we keep our glue gun tip clean. And then you're going to take and put this, the hand in or the arm. We're going to cut some of that off. I know his arm's not going to be that long. If you cut it, just make sure you're not cutting through the... Um, pipe cleaner and then if you have to roll this down and go in there and grab the arm and pull it up and you can do that and then I keep the seam of the sleeve on the bottom of the mitten not up by the thumb okay so it can kind of be hidden And then we're going to glue this down underneath here. So this, you got to glue this really good. You got to make sure you get both of the mittens the same. So they're both the same like this. Okay, here. And then you're going to cut some of this sleeve off. Depends on how long you want his arms. So his arms are going to get glued under here. But I'm going to... Wait, we're got to get his head or his um, nose on. And I will show you how I make his nose. So I got a fabric. You can do like a seven by seven inch square. And I put it over my hand like this. This is a stretch. Um, I think it's Jet Set Knit from Joanne. So it's kind of like swimsuit material and it's the nude. And this is usually what I use for my noses, unless I'm using a bead, which I've used for some of them. Then you're gonna take your, make sure you have enough thread, and I usually double it. I usually get it before I start my nose. And then grab it all like this, and you're gonna wrap it around so it's like this, okay? And then you're going to take one side and wrap it around once and pull both of them. Then you're going to take and wrap it around about three times, pull both of them. And you can let it sit. It locks it so it doesn't come open if you just did it once and then you set it down and it just everything pops open. And do a nice night tight knot. And you can do your surgeon's knot. And now we're going to pull these 
and tighten up our nose. You can shape it kind of. What I, I like the flatter noses like this one instead of a round ball. So those are the ones that I usually, if you want a round one, then you're going to go all the way around. If you want a flatter one, you're going to pull more from the top and the bottom. So underneath, and then you can just look at it and see if there's some place that needs to be pulled a little bit more. Make sure your gathers look good. So there we go. So now we're going to take our thread. We're not going to cut that off because we're going to use that to tie around his um, neck. You're going to pull it over the nose. Take these gathers between your fingers and don't cut your hand. And you're going to cut it about a quarter of an inch from the string. Okay. And I do have another way of making a nose. And I'm going to show you. Um, Mr. Jingles is going to get a girlfriend. So I will show you on the video when I do her. I haven't decided if I'm going to do this type of nose on her or not. So... <clears throat> So hopefully I will get her out um, kind of following this one. So I'm going to wrap this around his neck in the back. And then I bring it around to the front and to the back again. And then tie it off. And I do my surgeon's knot three loops. Or if you want to just do two and then tighten. And then I just do a regular knot. And then I cut it about half inch or so from the knot. And there we have his little nose. And so if we wanted to get his arms on, let's do his legs first because we, um, I sold those on. So here's one and I will show you, I sold the end of it. So you can sew it shut just like you did his um neck and his head so i gotta get some stuff out of the way so you're going to take you're not going to need this whole piece of um two pipe cleaners twist them together and then i just took one end and folded it over and hot glued it but it's going to be wrapped in here so it's not going to really matter so you're going to take a bead of hot glue and go down you're going to have some quilt batting and this is about four inches wide by about almost eight long and you're going to put that in lay it right on top of that hot glue and then you're going to start rolling it up kind of tight and however big you want it so i'm going to go about there and i'm going to hold on to it and i'm going to put my bead of glue right underneath there and now I don't have to touch I don't have to try to flip that edge over so that's why I left it longer and then just cut that off so his legs depends on how long you want them if you want them shorter if you just wanted to do little feet sticking out from his body you can do that too so I already have this one done so I'm going to cut the pipe cleaner and I'm going to use these wire cutters I got these from Hobby Lobby they were I think they were $20 they are really good wire cutters um, I've cut a little dull rod with it too you can't get a big one because it doesn't open up very wide but it really cuts through a lot of thick wire they're really nice and they have them at Hobby Lobby in the floral section so now you're going to take and we have this leg done. Here's our leg. This is just part of the sweater. So I sewed it. I cut it. It was three inches by about nine. But that's still a little long. But what we're going to do is we're going to need to tuck some in so we can sew that to his body. You can if you want to hot glue it, but I didn't want to hot glue it. So you're going to turn his leg right side out. And then you're going to take this and insert it into the leg. 
And then we're going to glue the bottom part because that's going to get in his shoe. And I made a glue stick. So just glue this, the sleeve, the little tube that you made for his leg. Just glue that to that batting that's going to get tucked in a shoe. And we're going to make sure that his seam, when we put it on, sew it on, that it's going to get sewed underneath. So it's underneath. I'll show you. And you're just going to tuck this in. And you could hot glue this. If you're going to glue this on, you could just hot glue this and then glue it on. But if I hot glue this, I'm not going to be able to sew through it. So I'm just going to leave that. And I had a needle here somewhere. So I'm just going to actually use some thread, needle and thread. And I double knotted it. It's, you're not going to be able to see it. So I'm going to... You can either leave the tail um, or cut it. So I'm just going to gather this up. I'm going to go inside. And I'm going to... It's probably my knot is not going to stay. So I'm just going to take a stitch. And now I'm just going to go back and forth from one side to the other. I'll probably come up here so you can see what I'm doing. If you can see. So I'm going from, because we folded that edge in so we don't have a raw edge. And I'm going right in there and I'm going to pull that out and then I'm going to go on the bottom and do the same thing. Okay. And now we're not going to cut this. We're going to sew this on him. So let me get, you're going to figure out where you want his legs to be. If we have to cut this shorter, if it's too long, we can do that. So I want it right down here. So we're going to sew it right down at the bottom and you're just going to take a stitch into the body and let me see if I can get you close enough so you can see what I'm doing. his body and come out so that we can hide the thread and pull it and then cut it off and I'm going to do his other leg and then I'll be back okay I'm back so Mr. Jinkles has got one leg and one arm on and his other leg but he doesn't have a shoe so um, let me we'll do his shoe and then we're going to cut his hat so let's see, I had, I have to have him sit on this basket, but I, this basket moves. So I had to have this um, rubber stuff. So I'm going to just put, I'm going to make sure I first, I'm going to flip up his leg and we're going to glue the sweater to that um, quilt batting that we wrapped the pipe cleaner around. And then we're going to put that in. You're going to stuff his shoes really good. You're going to need to leave enough space so you can tuck his foot in there. And then you're going to grab some thread. And before you grab the thread, you're going to take and put some glue in there. Go down a little bit further. Don't go up too high by the top of the shoe. And then you're going to take your thread and you're gonna tie it off. I had to go down a little bit lower. I didn't wanna go up too high. 
Let's see. Yeah, stir it in the back. Wrap it around the front. Okay, nope, you gotta start in the front. Wrap it around the back. You gotta start in the front like that. And then wrap it around the back and then come back to the front. And then you're just gonna tie a knot. You're gonna make sure his all of his feet are kind of even. And then do your surgeon's knot, three loops. And do another knot, regular knot. And then cut them and leave them some little ties. And then his arm. I had to cut his arm a lot shorter, so let me measure. So I have it probably up to about here. It's best to cut it longer and make it longer. You can always cut it shorter if it's too short. Then you have to start all over again. So now we're just going to take and put some glue inside there. And I need some glue sticks. And I put them in the freezer. And I thought I took them out. And I can't find them. Nope, they're still in there. <laughs> Putting your glue sticks in the freezer is supposed to make it so it doesn't get those strings, which I hate. Let's put my glasses back on. So we're just going to kind of glue where that batting is so that it stays. And then you're going to glue, make sure the seam side is down. You're going to put glue on the sweater, just on the underneath side first. And then we're going to lift this up. I have to make sure I look at him and make sure he's got... Um, his arms get in the right place. If you kind of figure it out, if you can, if you have to move it, do it quick and then press that down. And then I'm going to put some hot glue on the top and then just press that down. Okay. So now his arms are bendable, his hands, his little thumb, his legs, you can cross his little legs. All right, so now we got his nose on and his hat. We were gonna work on his hat. So let's set him aside. And part of this sweater is gonna be for his girlfriend. This is gonna be part of her dress shirt. And so this is the main body and I'm not gonna use down here. I'm gonna use up here more. So what I'm going to do is just cut the back, I'm not going to cut all the way through, and I'm going to cut right up by the armpits, and then I'm going to cut down the seam, and he doesn't have a very long hat, but we got to go, because we got to flip some of it under so we don't have a raw edge. And this should be plenty wide enough. Go to the other seam. So it all depends how you want the hat. If you want the hat longer, you could use the whole ribbing. It depends what your sweater is like. So this piece is 14 inches by about 14 ish. Okay. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to take a quick break and I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and sew this. Sew my seam. And um, I, I didn't, I don't think I did his hat in a point. I did it in a tube. So I'm going to sew all the way. I'm going to sew up to here, leaving three inches not sewed, because that's going to be his little um, fringes. Okay, so I'm kind of doing it like my snowman hat. Okay, so it's going to be a tube, and you're going to sew straight up here, or hot glue it, and leave three inches open, okay, at the top. So sew from here down to the bottom, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I sewed. 
this is going to be down by his face. Okay, this is going to be his little fringe. So I left that open. So now we're going to cut our fringes. And you don't want to cut them too thin because they'll probably just rip apart. And you're going to cut down to the stitching. This where you ended here. So my stitches are probably quarter inch, maybe a little bit more wide. And I'm cutting through both pieces, folded in half. And then by the fold here, I'm going to cut that fold. And then I'm going to cut these two. And now what we're going to do is we're going to turn some of this so it's inside. And we're, we're going to do that so that we can have... Hopefully it's long enough um, so that we can have a nice finished edge. If you want to do a cuff like this, then you'll be able to sew it or fold it up. So we'll see here. So we'll see what I'm going to do here. And I think his hat's a little big, so I need to sew it smaller because I don't want it, it's too floppy in the back here. Okay, so I'm going to do, take a, another quick break and I'm going to sew this smaller and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Let's get his little seat here. Let me make sure you guys can see his head and everything. I'm going to back you up just a little. And I'm going to cut, this is where I sewed. And I'm going to cut that excess off. I don't want that in the hat. And you're probably going to cut a few fringes off. And now we'll turn that in so we want this tucked in and you're gonna fold it so it is like that okay and then we're gonna tie this and I would glue this but I'm afraid I'm gonna see the hot glue so I'm probably not going to that's there we go that's how I want his hat okay so let's glue that on and then we'll do our fringes. So we're going to turn this up really be careful not to pull and wipe your glue gun tip off. I got a big drip of glue and glue. I'm going to put a little bit on his sweater because I know where the hat is going to land. And be careful up by his nose. We're getting his beard. Ah! <laughs> okay, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> he needs a beard. At least I got it. I stopped it before I got it. Okay, so now I don't want a really long beard because I want to be able to see his little outfit. So yes, we should have put his beard on a while ago. So you're going to cut, and I just got a really small piece, not real small, but a small piece. And you're cutting just the backing. Because if you cut all the way through, you're going to lose your fringe. Okay, so now you're going to put glue underneath. I cut a U-shape out to go tuck it under his nose. You're going to lift his nose up. And you're going to make sure that those gathers from his nose stay under that beard. And then glue the two tabs of the beard up alongside, right next to the nose. Don't get glue on your nose. Oh, he's looking pretty cute. Now we can finish gluing his hat. <laughs> okay. Sorry for the long video, you guys. 
but when I get these intricate ones, they it's not like a one and done. And I, I've tried to do the videos where I just film it and talk and then speed stuff up. I can't do it. I just, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to lay him down here. <clears throat> so now you can go back if you need to glue more of that hat down. So that we have it all nice and glued. And now we'll glue his nose. <laughs> and I got a little too much glue out there. So I gotta pull that down. Okay, we saved the day. We got his little nice fluffy beard on. So we got his hat. So what I used to tie his hat off was I got this um, lace. And it's like a crocheted um, lace. I got it at the Dollar Tree. And some ribbon. And I don't have the wide ribbon, so I'm just going to use a couple. This is a like an off-white and I usually get a lot of these ribbons at Joann's. Um, I know um, Hobby Lobby and Walmart have the same ones too. So it's um, whoever, I guess, has the color you want and if it's on sale. So we're going to take, and you're just going to get all of this together. And we're going to wrap this around his fringe. Let me have them sit down so you guys can see. Make sure I'm going to check and make sure you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to put the ribbons on the outside. And I'm going to tie it in the front. So let me just quickly leave that there. I got to make sure you're looking, you're seeing what I'm seeing. Let me get you a little closer. Okay. So we're just going to tie this in a knot. I'm not going to try to tie all this in a bow. And you make sure you get all of his gathers, his hat in there. And I didn't, I missed one. Or not his gathers, his fringe. Okay, so we got, I got all of it in there. And I want the ribbon on the outside and the lace on the inside, if it ends up being that way. I like this because it's kind of monochromatic and this is maybe a little late for Christmas, but he can be up all year. I like some of my my gnomes. I don't. I mean, I have a china hutch. I put some of them in, but um, that's where I put Bernie and Brooke Bunkins there and there. So now we're just gonna tie this in a knot, and we'll leave some tails. I'm just trying to get everything. So if you guys like what you see and you want to see more, click on that like button. So that tells me that you want to see more of this. If you haven't subscribed, I would love for you to join my crafting community and click on that subscribe button. And then click on the bell if you want to be notified when I upload new videos. You must have your settings turned uh, um, your notifications turned on in your settings on your phone or your computer whatever you're watching this on so we can what we're going to do is we're going to cut these a little bit and you can pull these i'm not sure if they're going to curl 
like fleece does. Um, but they'll curl up. So I kind of wanted it a little ratty. A little ratty looking. And I'm trying to think of a name for his girlfriend. And I haven't come up with a name with for her yet. So... I have to go back to work Tuesday. This is Tuesday, the first Tuesday after Christmas. I have to go to work tomorrow. I work from home, so I don't don't go very far. So if you want these longer, or some of them shorter, if you want them longer, don't cut them. <laughs> So like I said, you can pull them, you can do whatever you want, make them ratty, ratty, ratty. Okay, I could sit there for an hour and then you guys would be mad because my video would be two hours. <laughs> okay, so let me look at him and see. Okay, so I was doing some little bells. And the first one I did where he was holding them. And this one I'm going to do a little different. I took some ribbon and I folded. I don't know. If I folded it. Can you say that? I don't know if this word. Folded. Folded the ribbon in half and glued it. And then I just did the dovetail. And before I glued it, I put in the fold, I put some jute. Okay, so that I can tie it so he can hang on to it. And then I took um, a needle and I took some thin jute and I get this at the Dollar Tree. So I usually have like a few different sizes of the jute. Um, like a thinner and a thicker. So then we're just going to take some of this and I'm going to get some of my mess out of the way. And I'm going to glue, I have a, two different size bells, so I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of sew it on here. So I'm going to take a stitch up in the ribbon. I'm going to put my bell on. If your needle will go through that. I have a pretty thick needle and it went through there. And now I'm going to go back through where that this is coming out okay I got so much so let me pull this up and you'll be able to see so that's what I did I went in here came out here and then I went back in here and now I'm on this side so I can pull that up and tie that off. I'll show you again, and I gotta make sure you guys are seeing this. And you can leave a little tail on the bell. Okay, we'll see if we can get one more. Okay, so we're going to go in one side, and you might be going through some glue, and then you're going to come out the other side, okay? Make sure you have a tail, so you have it like this. Now you're going to take your bell, wherever it went, put your bell on. Hopefully it'll go through, and it's not going to go through that one. So, we'll use a big one. You're going to put your bell on there. And you're going to go back through where this tail is coming out. And come out where, on the other side. Okay, so here's our bell. There's her tail. Let me bring it through and you'll be able to see it.
So we have our bell like that. We have one tail on one side and one on the other side. And you can tighten that up. If you only want to put two bells on there, you can. Um, I'm not liking the big one and the small one, so um, I'll probably cut the small one off and put a big one on. And then just tie that in a knot. And then cut your tails. And then you can tie this in a little knot so that he can hold on to it. And I didn't glue the first one, I didn't glue it to his hand. So then you can slip it on there and he's holding on to his bells. And then I did put a bow on his hat and I used some jute. I have to see what I did. I used some jute and a ribbon and I don't know if I have a wide ribbon like that, the white stuff. And I don't. So I'm going to use this other stuff. It should work. So I'm just going to tie both of these together at the same time and hopefully I got enough. So I'm just going to make the bunny ears or just one wrap it around just tie a bow however you want to do. If you want to do bunny ears, if you want to do make a loop wrap it around and try to grab both of them and then get your bow even and then we'll cut our little tails and we'll glue this on his hat. And we're going to glue it on this side. And I did make... Let me get it together and I will be right back. I'm going to clean my mess up a little bit. Okay, I'm back. So I had this and I believe it was from an earring and I have a lot of beads and charms and stuff and then I had a key so I put a key on there and I the first one I made I had just tied it on with string but this one I have this brad and it's got the prongs on the side bottom of it and I'm going to put that through the Top, top chain in here and I'm going to put that and it's not going to, the brad is big enough, it's not going to go through the, the chain on the, the loop on the chain and I'm going to put that brad through his sweater and then I'm going to open it up and then it's going to hang there. I thought that was so clever. <laughs> so now he's got his little jingly jangles. And he has the key to his girlfriend's heart. And she's got the heart. So I just thought that was cute. I have to come up with a name for her though. So this is Mr. Jingles. Thank you guys for joining me today i know this is a little bit long and i did some sewing and showed you guys how to do some stuff um oh wait wait i forgot his little bunny friend he's got his little bunny so how i did his bunny was i had bought this wood at hobby lobby and it comes in different sizes. I think it's backed by the wood, and I think I've seen it in the Christmas. 
And so I just took three different sizes and I glued them all together. And then I took um, some greenery and just glued it on there. And the little bunny I got um, from Joanne's online in the Christmas ornaments. And he was probably $9.99 or $12.99. And he was 60% off. I had an owl for the first one and I don't know where he went. He probably went in the garbage. And everything goes in the garbage when I lose it. So that's how I made that. So he has a little friend. And... Um, so you could do that. You could just, you don't, you know, accessorize however you want to. Um, if you guys have any questions on what I did, please leave it in the comments. If there's, um, something that you want me to do, I have, I have one that I have to do. Um, but that's more of a summer. Um, and I'm going to dry, do some Valentine day. Thing. I will leave the PDF below but thank you for joining me today I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will get his little girlfriend done and just go out go to your thrift stores look for your sweaters I'm going to be doing this is let me show you a little cutie too so he didn't have he just got boots and his boots I got you probably won't find them I got them at Hobby Lobby probably more toward um, summer um, and I tried to find them online I did find some at Joann's they or whatever you can go on Amazon also and look for boots Etsy um, I do have a video coming up I'm gonna show you how to make some shoes um, out of plaster of Paris and I've been trying I've been working on it for a little bit and I finally came, came up with a way to do it and it worked out so I just have to get that video out too. I want to finish it. Um, but I'm going to do Leaf. And his, he's made the same way as Mr. Jingles. And he's got a sweater. And his sweater was easier to make a little raggy. So I kind of like that. Um, his coat, I ended up gluing it. And I wish I wouldn't have done that. But um, I will show you how I made his coat and everything. And then um, I just made his little walking stick. And I didn't glue that to him, but he's coming up too. So I have to get him done um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. So I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for joining me today. Bye-bye.